Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back. You know, as we progress through this particular model, you're going to have to sooner or later start getting into all the drive gears, all the crossfeed gears, all the back gear gears, all the headstock gears. And I think that's a perfect opportunity to take the fear out of working with gears because this is what it's ultimately going to look like right there. And all these gears, well, needless to say, they have to mesh, and they have to mesh well. Let me show you what that gear, with that transmission right there. You want to see what that looks like in kit form? There you go. This is the gears right there, or these are the gears. Bar stock, already keyed, already, already grooved, notched, cut. This particular video is going to be like a classroom instruction where you go, I am never going to use this in the real world. But when I show you exactly how it all works, you're going to say, well, hey, that's cool. This is not going to be a comprehensive overview on how every gear on the planet is made. So if you're a guy that spent your entire life making gears, I do appreciate the fact that you even watch this video. But uh, for hobby level people, including myself, what I'm about to show you is probably going to be quite helpful. This is a 48 pitch gear. That has nothing to do with how many teeth are around the outside. It has, I think that means 48 teeth per inch. I think that's what that means. If I'm wrong, correct me. But you can have a 48 pitch gear of a smaller diameter. And when you do that, the small one looks more aggressive than the big one. Just because there's more teeth here, they appear to be finer. But that's not the case. They actually go together and they mesh. This is a 64 tooth. You can see the difference, or excuse me, 64 pitch. You can see the difference in the tooth profile. Just like a thread, the higher number gear pitch, the finer the gear is going to be. Okay, like a 32 pitch screw is a whole lot finer than a 10. And these are the smaller gears in the 48 range. You can see how this one looks really aggressive and that one doesn't, but they go together. When you work with gears, you work with a thing called a pitch diameter, just like a screw. In order for any gears to sit comfortably in an assembly like this, all of these center to center dimensions when the shaft is fixed must be held very tight so these gears stay together they don't whine, they don't clap around, and they don't scream. So let's go over the mock-up I got. I'm going to show you exactly what a pitch diameter is and how easy these are to work with. And if you've never done it, uh, you should just grab a couple of commercial gears and play with them. It's a lot of fun. Let's go over to the bench and check it out. Let's take a look at the wooden mock-up that I made to explain what I'm trying to convey at this point. Every gear will have a thing called a pitch diameter, just like every screw has a pitch diameter pitch dimension, pitch diameter. It's not the same as the OD. It is a mechanical, theoretical line between the teeth. And in an ideal world, those pitch diameters will run tangent as the gears move. They will never overlap. If they overlap, it's going to bind. If there's too much space between them, well, then the teeth jump around and knock around and all kinds of noise happens. I'm not going to get into pressure angles and lead angles and all that other stuff. This is just simply a very basic, I have two gears and I want to put them down so that they mesh. How do I do it? Well, you find the pitch diameter of each gear and you can either collectively add these up and divide it in half. So on this gear, 1.2, 1.0, could be inches, centimeters, millimeters, whatever. 1.2 and 1.0 will equal 2.2 all day long. 2.2 cut in half, 1.1. CTC, center to center. That's just a quick note I usually make to myself. In order for a gear arrangement like this to function properly, in a minimum, 0.6 and 0.5 are half the values here. 1.1 center to center will allow these to function correctly. If you need to do this and you're unsure of your machinery, stay to the high side of the 1.1, make it bigger, not smaller. Smaller it binds, but bigger it's going to make more noise and jump around and rattle. Gears are not that scary to work with, 
So when you're working with them, find out what that pitch diameter is, write it down, use it. That's all I got, guys. I knew this was going to be a quickie, but with the transmission on this little engine lathe coming up, I needed to show you this so you understand what's going on. And now you're just a little bit smarter. Thanks for watching. It's Joe Pine, Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I hope you are well wherever you are. I'm out.